Hi, this is Swapnil and we are almost at the end of 2020 and we are almost there uh, <laughs> waiting ex you know, eagerly, anxiously for 2021 to see what it holds for us. 2020 has not been a great year in many ways. So 2021 may be uh, uh, something a bit more promising. To, to talk about 2021, especially from the perspective of security, cybersecurity, we have with us our own wizard, Alex Dinaris, CEO and co-founder of Polyverse. Alex, before we talk about uh, uh, predictions for 2021, I do want to know from you, what is Polyverse today? What is the focus of the company? Uh, so with Polyverse, we produce secure versions of Linux and the full operating system stack. Uh, we create intrinsic cyber resiliency to stop memory attacks, script injection attacks, configuration errors, just a whole class of uh, cyber attacks that can happen on your systems. Uh, all of our technology works in a fire and forget way. It's a one click install uh, and it works in the cloud, works on premise and even works on devices large and small. I would ask you to go grab your crystal ball and tell me what prediction do you have for 2021? Just one caveat, I will have you again on the show in December 2021 to see how many of those predictions turn out to be true. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's putting me on the spot. Well, I think to, to give the predictions for um, 2021, I think it'd be helpful to first just maybe highlight two things from 2020 uh, that I think everybody knows, but, but I think it'll lead into 2021 pretty, pretty well. Uh, the first was the, the whole shift to work from home. And obviously cybersecurity has been on the radar for many organizations for, for decades now. But when all of a sudden your entire workforce is working from home, it, it opened up a whole new class of, of attack surface, a whole new class of issues and vulnerabilities. And a lot of IT departments and engineering departments around the world had to scramble very quickly uh, to adopt their security, you know, to adopt and change their security profile and how they handled it. And kind of fundamental to that was this idea of uh, zero trust networking. The idea that, you know, the traditional firewalls uh, didn't really work anymore in a work from home world. You know, prior to 2020, you could have this thesis that says, uh, all of my secure stuff is in the office and I'm going to put it on a corporate network and people physically have to go to the office and I'm going to surround the office with a, with a network firewall and that's going to keep everything safe. And without debating the merits of that approach uh, in a work from home, that doesn't work at all. And so whether it was a good idea or a bad idea, it just it simply just wasn't, you know, wasn't the, the right model for the reality of today's world. Then on top of that, uh, even though this was a, a, a late breaking event, uh, we've seen incredible repercussions, repercussions from it, uh, was the FireEye hack. When even a very noted and well-respected you know, security company themselves gets hacked and gets hacked in a very severe way, uh, make no doubts about it. I'm not at liberty to discuss everything that happened there, but, um, but it was, this was a significant hack and, and credit to the FireEye team for, for owning it and, and disclosing it. But what it really uh, has had the effect of is creating a wake up call for folks to really focus in on um, uh, defense in depth and trying to be as preventative as possible through many, many different layers. Uh, because if you just have sort of one you know, one static defense, a motivated attacker is going to get through that. Uh, and even if they're a very well-defended company like FireEye, they will get through. Uh, so it very much was a wake-up call uh, for folks. So that uh, with that tee up uh, for sort of the things I think that happened in, in um, you know, notable events in 2020, looking forward to 2021, uh, I think we are going to see a, an increased emphasis on defense in depth uh, and really trying to be thorough about your security posture, your cybersecurity posture and the cybersecurity defenses. And one tagline that I'm willing to put a prediction on 
Uh, so yes, you can you can uh, grade me on this in, in a year from now, in December 2021, is I'm gonna call it zero trust everything. Zero trust networking was the buzzword uh, of the year by far. It was what you know just about every organization we talked to was was worried about and thinking about because it was all about how do I get my uh, employees and staff to be able to work from home safely, right? So zero trust networking you know, gets into uh, you know the remote access type type products and so forth. And there's a lot of great products out there like Zscaler and so forth that have had just phenomenal phenomenal years. If you say zero trust everything, you're basically taking this idea that says in zero trust networking, you can't trust the firewall. You can't trust that the firewall is going to be perfect. You still need one. They're useful technologies, but they're, but they're going to be porous. So zero trust everything says, well, let's take that same philosophy and we can't trust the, um, uh, you know, we, we can't trust the underlying substrate, uh, then what do we do about it? So you have zero trust software. Okay, we know that software is going to have bugs. Let's use technologies like polymorphing, like what Polyverse does, to, to defend the software, even if it has bugs, even if it isn't patched. That's one of the key value props of what we offer is, you know, as a company is this idea that we can protect your systems, even if you're out of date on patches, even if it's a legacy system, uh, even if even against zero day attacks. So that sort of zero trust software is, is know that there's gonna be bugs, know that you can't patch everything, you know, and don't trust your patch level uh, and provide protection. You know, zero trust DevOps, same idea. Uh, you know, you do a lot of work these days on DevOps to, to you know, and particularly DevSecOps to have a secure engineering pipeline but think about the, the stack that you're pulling in, right? The actual software that's deployed is not just your code, it's your code plus Java, plus the kernel, plus the bootloader, plus the hypervisor, plus all these pieces. And uh, you, know, you look at the, the size and complexity of the stack, there's over 8 billion lines of code in the stack. Who's protecting that? Is that safe? So again, zero, zero trust DevOps is about, you know, thinking through what happens if I can't trust my, my stack. So I think we're gonna see, you know, then you can keep going, you know, zero trust authentication, zero trust encryption models, zero trust, uh, you know, data, data models, homomorphic encryption, zero trust CPUs. You can't even trust the CPU. So I think the sort of zero trust everything is gonna be uh, the big shift in thinking and, and so forth and in discussion for 2021. So the third prediction I would make would be industry consolidation. Uh, if you look across the cybersecurity landscape, there are uh, over 1,300 vendors uh, in the cybersecurity space. Uh, and they're all calling on the same top, you know, Fortune 500 global companies. And there's a lot of great technology, a lot of great work going on, but at the end of the day, this is not a space that uh, really needs 1,300 vendors. There are just there's key things to protect. You got to protect your software. You got to protect your networks. You got to protect your data and your users. But as you sort of have the technologies and systems in place to protect those things, uh, what do you do with the other thousand a thousand companies? Uh, so one of the things that we're seeing a lot of uh, right now is uh, a lot of industry, a lot of talk about industry consolidation. Uh, so I expect in 2020, 2021, there's no particular vendor that I'm going to call out uh, uh, or not call out, but I do think we will see uh, an increase in M&A and merger activity uh, in 2021 over 2020. What is going to be the focus of Polyverse in 2021? So for Polyverse, uh, we're really focused on this, um, you know, this zero trust uh, anywhere idea. It's really gonna be a lot about uh, expanding our footprint and really increasing the depth uh, and um, you know, thoroughness of all the protections that we provide. Uh, so we, we completely cover the, you know, the fileless attacks and so forth. And now we're working increasingly on uh, on-device protection. So even if you no have hostile actors already on your devices, we can provide protection. 
So it's a new class of uh, cyber defense that we will be rolling out um, uh, next year. Perfect. Um, Alex, thank you so much for, uh, first of all, taking your time and explaining once again what Polyverse does, what is going to be focused, and also especially for grabbing your crystal ball and share some of those uh, predictions that you have for next year. Uh, I look forward to talk to you again. We'll see if we can talk this year, or if not, then of course, certainly next year. So happy new year and see you next year. Thank you, Swapna. Well, with only one major uh, testable prediction, uh, putting all my eggs on that basket.